All right, so the 49ers are back to work together today. One of the off-season phases underway at Levi Stadium. That's where the team facility is. And we've got very, very relevant news to that. Justin Jefferson didn't show up to the Vikings day one today, but it really does look like Brandon Ayuk did show up to the 49ers day one today. This is from Ayuk's own Instagram. Day one as part of his caption with three rockets taken off. So Brandon Ayuk, I would assume, is at the facility. Now, this is not shocking. And I said that I expected him to be at the facility in my show yesterday. But this is not shocking because Brandon Ayuk on the podcast a couple weeks ago, they did it with Chad Ochocinco. Chad Johnson now? What's his name now? Is it Ochocinco or Johnson? But Brandon Ayuk said that he had been at the team facility today prior. So he essentially had said, I'm around the building. He also said on that very same podcast that he hopes professionals on both sides, meaning his representation and whoever's negotiating for the 49ers, that obviously includes John Lynch and Parag Marate, he said he hopes that they reach a deal. So Brandon Ayuk has expressed a desire to be in San Francisco for the long run. And Brandon Ayuk has been at the team facility already before today. And his Instagram post today suggests that he was going to be back at the team facility for day one of this offseason phase, this work with his teammates. Despite all this, you still have people who have no clue what they're talking about, especially Philadelphia Eagles media. I just called somebody out on Twitter. He said, look, the Eagles... They signed Devontae Smith early. Meanwhile, the 49ers didn't do anything, and Brandon Ayuk is disgruntled. How disgruntled does Brandon Ayuk look on his way to the facility? I don't think he's disgruntled. Meanwhile, you have people misreading this situation, either because they're being ignorant and they can't figure out what's actually going on, or they just don't understand how this kind of stuff works. But let me give you some perspective. Debo Samuel, in a very similar situation to... Brandon Ayuk, two years ago, did not show up on this day. He wasn't there for the 49ers' voluntary off-season workouts. These are voluntary workouts, by the way, that Brandon Ayuk seems to be talking about it on his Instagram. Nick Bosa, in essentially the same position as Brandon Ayuk last year, fifth-year option, looking for a new contract, did not show up on this day. So Ayuk is showing up where Samuel and Bosa previously did not show up. That is a significant deal. Ayuk is talking about a deal, wanting a deal to be done in times when Debo Samuel and Nick Bosa were not publicly talking about wanting a deal to get done. Those deals both got done, obviously, and all negotiations are going to be a little bit different. But my main point has been that this is fundamentally different for Brandon Ayuk than it has been at any of the previous junctures in a good way for the 49ers. Ryan Williams, his agent, is friends with John Lynch. Ayuk himself, this is, I think, very big, has said that he wants to get a deal done. If he's trying to negotiate by playing hardball here, and a lot of people will point at the Instagram unfollow, but uh, I, I, I'll tell you, you need to grow up if you think that an Instagram unfollow is somehow significant in this situation. We, you need to add some maturity to your own analytical skill set. A lot of people will point at that, but when you point at the actual stuff that's happening in this Brandon Ayuk situation, it very, very much points to this actually being ahead of the 49ers' other contractual situations for A-listers and extensions in prior years. And they have successfully extended George Kittle, Fred Warner, Debo Samuel, and Nick Bosa in four consecutive seasons. Now, some of the Eagles media is like, well, Philadelphia did this with Devontae Smith, $25 million per year. And they're acting like the 49ers haven't done anything. Well, first of all, they have extended players in four straight years. They have a track record of paying A-listers that's actually bigger than Philadelphia's. And two, the 49ers with Brandon Ayuk, I mean, this is a fifth-year option guy, kind of like Nick Bosa last year. They're paying him. If they do pay him, they're going to be paying him early, just like they paid Nick Bosa early. Bosa still had a season left under his existing rookie contract with the 49ers at the time that he got paid. Ayuk still has a season left. If you want to go to examples of the 49ers paying players early, then you can go back also to George Kittle and Debo Samuel. They got paid after year three. The one exceptional thing about what Philadelphia did today with Devontae Smith is that 
They paid him after year three, even though he has a fifth-year option. Anybody picked in the first round, a team can exercise his fifth-year option. So it's not the standard four-year deal for rookies. It's four years plus one. It could be a five-year deal. So the 49ers, basically, their modus operandi has been with players on non-first-round deals that are only under contract for four years in their rookie deals. If they are A-listers, they have paid them after year three. Fred Warner, George Kittle, Debo Samuel after year three. That's the 49ers want to get this done with a year still left on the player's contract. The players that have been first rounders that the 49ers have had to extend. So Nick Bosa, obviously, and now Brandon Ayuk. The goal has been to get that done after year four because you don't want to waste the extra year of team control that you have with the first round pick. That extra fifth year option gives the team more optionality, more adaptability, and that's what the 49ers have done. The Eagles have actually given up optionality to pay Devontae Smith early. What they did is they exercised the fifth-year option, and then they decided to pay him on top of that through 2028. Now, Devontae Smith had just over 1,000 yards in each of the past two seasons. His metrics, receiving-wise, are nowhere near as productive and efficient as Brandon Ayuk's. He also is not nearly as complete of a player as Brandon Ayuk, who is a monstrous run blocker. Devontae Smith is a skinny guy. He's not nearly as good of a blocker. I mean, Brandon Ayuk is a much more complete player. I think everybody can agree that Brandon Ayuk is going to make more money than Devontae Smith. He's more valuable of an all-around receiver. So to me, the fact that the Eagles paid on the surface, and we don't know the fully guaranteed money, and that's what really matters, but on the surface, we can start looking at this. They said three years, $75 million, $25 million annually. We look at that, and we could say, ooh, they are anticipating the market to go up for receivers with guys like Justin Jefferson, who, by the way, didn't show up to the Vikings' uh, first day of availability to today. But they're expecting guys like Jefferson and Ayuk to get big contracts, and they think that those contracts are going to accelerate the receiver market. And the Eagles, by paying Devontae Smith early, they're taking a bit of a gamble because, to me, Right now, given Devontae Smith's production, this seems like an overpay. They think it won't be an overpay once the dust settles and all these receivers sign. Are the Eagles correct? I don't know. That's something that we literally can't answer right now. We don't know exactly which way this is going to go. We don't know how Devontae Smith is going to produce. If the market doesn't explode the way that some people think it will, and then Devontae Smith, his numbers don't increase if he stays at 1,000 yards per season roughly, and then we'll look into the advanced metrics later. But if those cursory numbers stay the same, they're definitely overpaying him at $25 million per year because he's not the same type of versatile player and blocker and all-around threat that somebody like Brandon Ayuk is. Somebody mentioned, oh, well, this the 49ers are taking too long. This, this has set a new floor for Brandon Ayuk. No, it hasn't. We always knew that Brandon Ayuk was going to be over $25 million. In fact, I had the Brandon Ayuk 49ers contract projection. I could back up what I say with stuff that I've already written. My Brandon Ayuk contract projection, which you can find here at The Athletic. I could even find the actual spreadsheet that I made for this piece. I had him at $25.7 million per year. But what really matters is the fully guaranteed money. And we don't have that number for Devontae Smith yet. We have the total guarantees. They're over $50 million. But fully guaranteed money is different. That's what really matters in these deals. I have Ayuk rivaling Tyreek Hill for that number one spot in fully guaranteed money once this deal is done at $52 million or so. Devontae Smith is not going to be that high. So my projection from two weeks ago was already more lucrative for Brandon Ayuk than this contract for Devontae Smith. So no, it didn't set a new floor. The Eagles wanted to get some of their business done a little bit earlier, so they paid somebody who's a worse player than Brandon Ayuk a lot of money, $25 million per year. The Ayuk negotiations are separate of this. What, again, when you go to, to my piece here, we talk so much about how special of a player Brandon Ayuk has been. And I think nothing illustrates that more concisely than this X, Y axis. Brandon Ayuk is in the very top right. I don't even know where Devon Here's Devontae Smith is right here. I'm circling him. Devontae Smith is an upper right guy. You want to be further to the right and further up. It's separation grade on the X axis. It's catch point and yak grade on the Y. Devontae and Debo Samuel are about the same spot on this graph. It's 
Brandon Ayuk is the complete outlier. So he's going to he's going to be higher than Devontae Smith's total. We knew that from the beginning and that didn't change today. And one thing that's different between Brandon Ayuk and some of the other elite receivers in the game that are looking for money, by the way, Justin Jefferson, that's somewhere that's this is a place where Brandon Ayuk differs. Jefferson was not at Vikings day 1, voluntary Vikings day 1 today. Jefferson's right here. Dontavian Wicks, by the way, it's an impressive young player. But Jefferson, he's also one of the fine receivers in this game. But Ayuk is way up here. I think Jefferson will probably make more than Ayuk based on raw production. I think the 49ers, even if Ayuk makes absolutely elite money right there in the top three, 49ers might still be getting a bargain. That's how damn good Brandon Ayuk is. Another factoid for you, a lot of people, that this is another myth. As we update those just coming in, Brandon Ayuk reports to day one for the 49ers. Another myth is that the 49ers are a run-first team. Well, in the postseason, the 49ers called 122 pass plays and 77 run plays. They called 45 more pass plays than run plays in the postseason. And before you go running off and saying, well, they were behind in the NFC Championship game, that's 122 to 77. That gap more than covers the fact and the margin for error or the margin of difference of them being behind by 17 points to the Detroit Lions in the NFC title. We have seen the 49ers transform with these weapons and with Brock Purdy, a quarterback, we have seen them transform into well, obviously a really balanced team. That's always the goal with Kyle Shanahan, but they are also a pass first team now because Brock Purdy is an elite quarterback. So, 49ers and two $20 million receivers makes absolute sense. With the Philadelphia Eagles having paid A.J. Brown $25 million per year and now Devontae Smith $25 million per year, they become just the second team ever to have two $20-plus million receivers on the same team. You had Keenan Allen and Mike Williams previously with the Los Angeles Chargers in that designation. Will the 49ers become the third? Why the hell not? You got a pass first team. You've got an elite quarterback. You've got Brandon Ayuk doing stuff like this. And Debo Samuel's also in the top right of this graph. I mean, hell, Jawan Jennings is there. You want as many good weapons as possible. So Brandon Ayuk deserves top dollar. The 49ers realize that. Ayuk realizes that. And he's obviously here to play ball. Brandon Ayuk, there he is ready for day one. He's here to play ball. He is at the 49ers facility at a time when Debo Samuel, Nick Bosa, in you know similar parts of their contract progressions were not. And that is a, a big, big update for the 49ers. A team that in the playoffs called 122 pass plays and 77 run plays. Now on a 14 of those pass plays, Brock Purdy tucked it and ran. But Kyle Shanahan literally called 122 pass plays, and then Purdy's mobility did the rest. So I think you've got to outfit them with as many good receivers as possible. And Brandon Ayuk obviously fits into that. But you know, just the difference, him reporting to day one, Justin Jefferson not reporting to day one. I, I think everything, the totality of what we've seen so far, all the evidence. I mean, yesterday we talked about Ryan Williams, Brandon Ayuk's agent, shooting down the the fake uh, trade request reports. Obviously, anything is possible at any given time in the NFL, but we have to assign probabilities to these things, and we have to see which way the wind is blowing in these things. And if we actually open our ears and listen to what Ayuk has to say, to what his agent had to say on Twitter yesterday, telling one of those fake reporters that he needs to get better sources when he said that Ayuk has requested a trade. When we look at the difference between what is going on with Brandon Ayuk and what happened uh, with the uh, Debo Samuel situation and the Nick Bosa situation, we can connect all the tea leaves and see that the 49ers want to get something done. We also don't have to unnecessarily connect stuff that isn't necessarily connected. The Eagles like to pay at a different cadence than the 49ers. 49ers like to pay guys early, but Devontae Smith, this is two years early for Philadelphia. Two years early for a guy that cracked 1,000 yards, did not put up the same type of numbers as Brandon Ayuk, is not as physically imposing as Ayuk, is not just as good of an all-around player. $25 million, that might end up being an overpay. And, and if it's not, then yeah, Philadelphia got a good deal. But it's the risk they're willing to pay. I'm here to talk about strategy. 
And I'll tell you that the 49ers strategy is pay your A-listers who are under second round or lower contracts after year three. Exhibits A, B, and C are George Kittle, Fred Warner, and Debo Samuel. And then the 49ers strategy continues with pay your first rounders who are A-listers after year four before the fifth year option. Well, the 49ers did that with Nick Bosa, and now that's what they're trying to do with Brandon Ayuk. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Well, we're going to start, and I'm going to introduce this in a little bit. So why don't you hit the subscribe button right now? Hit the notification bell. I'm going to start doing a 49ers week in review video. That's going to be coming out in, uh, I'll probably go live with it in about 20 or 30 minutes after this one. I got to get some stuff in order. So be ready for that. We're going to go 49ers week in review. We're going to talk about some of the 49ers new visits on their top 30 list. We're going to talk about some draft prospects. We're going to talk about Brock Purdy because I think this video should be dedicated to Brandon Ayuk, but in a little bit, we'll talk about Brock Purdy. So 49ers week in review coming up. That's going to be the first installment of that series. My mother-in-law actually recommended it, so thank you to her. We will see how it does. But if you hit the notification bell, you will be ready for 49ers Week in Review. Meanwhile, I'm ready to answer some of your questions. Yes, the Rocky Scene contract did come out. If you're interested in this, I will get it for you. Just give me a second right now. That's a, that's a good call out. Get this up here for you. Rocky Essene's 49er contract is right here. And, and this is an interesting one because it gives us an idea. A firmer, I mean, I already guessed this, but this, this kind of solidifies it. We compare it to Isaac Yidham's deal. So Rocky Essene's deal is $1.125 million total possible. And then a signing bonus and a roster bonus of about $71,000 plus a workout bonus is $25,000. The total guarantee, fully guaranteed uh, amount is $985,000 of the base salary and then the signing bonus. So it's $1.056 million fully guaranteed in the contract. The cap hit, they use the veteran salary benefits. The cap hit's only $1.15 million or so. Isaac Yidham, the other cornerback who the 49ers signed, signed a $3 million deal, but only about $1.375 million of that is fully guaranteed. However, that $1.375 for Yidham is more than Rocky Yassin's $1.056 million. So as I was saying over the past couple of weeks, Isaac Yidham is likely to be the 49ers Third cornerback, the outside guy when Diamond Lenore slides in to nickelback. And I think that they signed Rocky Yassin to compete for that. But I think Isaac Yidham with the bigger contract, that reflects where he is in the pecking order at this time. What can we expect from the new defensive coordinator of the 49ers? Well, I think it's important to look at this not just with Nick Sorensen, who's going to bring back some of the basics. I think better run defense. I think they're going to be playing the linebackers more to shut down that run, stop the run so you could have some fun. But I think that Brandon Staley is going to be on that whiteboard, and I think he's going to be bringing big, bigger adaptability to the back end. So I think we're going to be talking about roving positions in the back end, a star position, if you will. We saw Jalen Ramsey play it for the Rams under Brandon Staley. We saw Derwin James, the safety, play it for Brandon Staley with the Chargers. Maybe we see Diometer Lenore moving around the formation. He was already doing a little bit of that last year, moving from an outside cornerback to nickel cornerback. So I think we're going to see more complex coverages on the back end for the 49ers. Steve Wilk started to bring a little bit of that last year. That probably was the strong suit of the 49ers defense. But what we'll see with the Staley-Nick Sorensen combination, since – Staley is not the coordinator. He's just an assistant head coach. We'll see the front be re-emphasized and the run defense be re-emphasized this year. I have looked at Zach Frazier from West Virginia, and the 49ers might go with a center. That is a position of need, in my opinion, as well. You can get better at that center position, even though Jake Brendel is still under contract for three years. So Zach Frazier, that'd be a prototypical center prospect that might fit with the 49ers. But remember, so much of that is cerebral. So it is, you know, you can watch a lot of tape, but uh, so much of the determination of scheme fit at center is going to be how well a guy knows Kyle Shanahan's playbook, which is stuff 
and how well the 49ers think that he can pick it up which is, and communicate it, which is stuff that it's really, really hard to tell from the outside on tape. Jason says, Demo has that fire physicality and twitch to play anywhere in the secondary. Yeah, he might be the dream star. That's the name of the position for Brandon Staley. With Ray Ray McLeod gone, can we expect to see Debo returning kickoffs and the new kickoff rules? Watching from Colorado Springs. Thank you, Moses. I, I think so. I've predicted Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey to be back there. Now, the 49ers still have to figure out punt returner. I think Ronnie Bell is the one leading candidate in-house right now, so I think that we might see them draft somebody who can compete for that role. But the new rules, without the running start or without as long of a running start on the kick returns, means that this is going to be much safer and it's going to be much more like a normal offensive play. So why not toss your best ball carriers out there? I think Debo Samuel might be perfectly cut out for it. Do I think that Greenlaw's injury recovery is going well? Greenlaw seems to think so, according to John Lynch. It is an Achilles recovery. I don't think we'll know for sure until he actually comes back. So why don't we just sit back, wait, and see how this goes? That's why the 49ers brought in Devondre Campbell. They might still be on the market for... Uh, the draft market for a linebacker. In fact, they added uh, some new players to the visit list. I'll share them with you right here. If you go to my 49ers depth chart, those of you who are familiar with this, you know you could scroll down and see the visit list. Tatum Bethune from Florida State, who played for UCS, UCF before that, played the final two seasons of his career for the Seminoles. He's a linebacker. Seventh round undrafted free agent projection. They're looking at him, top 30 visit, and also Eric All, the tight end out of Iowa. He's a fifth to sixth round projection got added to the list. So obviously the 49ers are still interested in adding a tight end and adding another linebacker. Brock Purdy's on Pat McAfee tomorrow. People can tune in. That should be good. I'll watch that. Are the 49ers trying to change the defensive secondary configuration to sign a third guy on game day like Justin Simmons? I think that at the right price, they would bring Justin Simmons in at a heartbeat. He's still a free agent. That being said, he, I think the safety market hasn't been what these guys thought it'd be. Simmons is the best available player out there. He's got the most interceptions out of any NFL player since 2018. He's waiting to see if he can get a better deal. The 49ers are seeing if they can get somebody on a very affordable deal because they're obviously playing financial Tetris here with their crowded uh, salary cap situation. So, yeah, if you could bring in Justin Simmons, who, by the way, I mean, th there's a tie to Brandon Staley. Simmons played for Vic Fangio in Denver. Just uh, Brandon Staley is a disciple of Vic Fangio. There's definitely a tie here. So I, I think that the 49ers would absolutely be all over that. But it has to fit within their budget. They have to stay financially disciplined. What do you want the link for? You want the link for the for this right here? You want the link for the roster? I'll put it in the comment section. There you go. Link is in the comment section. You can go check it out. How excited am I about the draft? I'm very excited about the draft. However, I won't be in Detroit. I'm going to be in the Bay Area. I, John Lynch, Kyle Shanahan, all the 49ers brain trust is at the facility. So that's where I'll be. I'll be with them at the facility. We don't actually, as reporters, we don't go to the site of the draft. The decisions are made remotely. It's been that way for a long time. So I will be in the Bay Area. Nothing against Detroit, but I'd much rather be in the Bay Area. I'm training for a big open water swim. This one's going to be epic. This one's going to be really ambitious. So stay tuned. We'll let you know probably at some point next week where, where we're going to be trying to swim to or swim from. It's going to be tough. <laughs> no guarantee we get this one done. John Lynch is going to speak to the media pre-draft on Monday the 22nd, so a week from now. So the 49ers get a week of work in. Those of you just joining, the news of today is Brandon Ayuk on, on Instagram posting this. Instagram where he no longer follows the 49ers, but he's talking about day one. 
talking about day one excitement. And that the 49ers are convening for, for day one of the off-season program today. So that's happening today, next week, John Lynch and the press conference. Pre-draft press conference. All right, if you guys don't have any more questions, I'll sign off. But if you do, I'll stay here. I'll answer more of them. We've got, I've got some good stuff in store for you when I do this 49ers weekly review. I wanted to get the IUK news across first, though. So anyways, swam across the Atlantic Ocean before. Don't worry, I'm not trying to swim across an entire ocean. The swim that we will be doing is going to be in an ocean, though. It's no longer in just a bay. It's going to be in an ocean. But it's not. I'm not like crossing the Pacific. I'm not swimming all the way to Hawaii or trying to. But you know, it, it, it is going to be ambitious. Let's put it that way. Here's one thing. If Justin Jefferson hits over 30 million per uh, average per year, do you think Ayuk hits 28 million per year? I don't know because average per year is not really the serious way of looking at this. And I'll tell you why. Tyreek Hill leads the way with 30 million per year right now. But the only reason he's there is because in the final year of his contract, I believe it's in 2024, which is massive, but none of it is guaranteed. None of that $43.9 million is guaranteed for Tyreek Hill in the final year. So the only reason they made it that big is to get to 30 million, to make it average out to 30 million. So, I mean, you could say, yeah, well, according to those numbers, it's 30 million, but that money is not likely to be earned, right? If you look at that, they're, not, they're gonna wanna renegotiate that in all likelihood. So in many ways, APY average per year is just a vanity number. And what really matters is the fully guaranteed money. Tyree Kill's also number one in fully guaranteed money. So that's more legit, 52.5 million. I'm looking more at the fully guaranteed money than anything else for Brandon Ayuk. And I do think he's going to exceed 50 million. I'm very curious to see where Justin Jeffers is going to be. But guess what? Jefferson missed a lot of time due to injuries this past season. Brandon Ayuk, one thing that he's really proven is durability. He's missed only one game since his rookie year. And that's really big. Availability is the best availability. All right. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. 49ers Week in Review is coming up very, very soon. I'm going to get to work on that show, and we'll be back live very soon. So be ready for that, and we will talk to you shortly.